Granny squares are so popular right now, but you don't have to spend a fortune on a fancy sweater or a blanket because you can make your own. And once you know how to make a granny square, you can seam them up to make sweaters, scarves, blankets, you name it. And I hope you are ready to make this absolutely gorgeous crochet granny square blanket today because it is honestly one of the prettiest ones I have ever seen. This is a marled gradient of 20 different shimmering colors, 64 granny squares total, and a stretchy reversible join. And we're gonna learn how to do all of this today. To join me in making this blanket, download the pattern at expressionfiberarts.com and while you're there, go ahead and sign up for email updates because you're gonna get free weekly knit and crochet patterns. Secondly, you will need some yarn. We used our lustrous bamboo alpaca fingering yarn for this and all the details of how we laid out and blended the colors are in the pattern for you. And although we used 20 colors of yarn and marled them by just holding the yarns together and working with them double, you totally don't have to. You can use as many colors as you like. You're just doing one little square of each. So have fun playing with the palette and come up with something that you love. So let's dive in. Here's how you make the basic granny square. So to start our granny square, we're gonna begin with a magic ring. Take your yarn tail, wrap it around two fingers and make a little X, pinch the X, reach under that first little loop and grab your tail, and you are all set up to start crocheting. So let's go ahead and begin with a chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll cinch up our little ring here in a minute. Then you're gonna start with two three actually, double crochets into that magic ring. So, one double crochet, two double crochets, and three double crochets. So this is our first little three double crochet cluster. You can go ahead and give a little tug on your magic ring if it's easier to work into it. Now following along on the chart, we're gonna create a corner with a chain two. So that's our corner. Now we're gonna work another cluster of three double crochets into that ring. One, two, and three. And we need another corner, so chain two. And another cluster of three double crochets into the ring. One, two, and three. And let's do another corner, chain two. Now we're just gonna work two double crochets into the ring. One and two. And the reason for that is we're gonna actually slip stitch into the third chain of this original chain five that we did. So it essentially looks like we have three double crochets right there. So that is the end and you can go ahead and scrunch up that hole if you like. So that is the end of round number one. For this round, you're gonna start with a chain three and you're gonna work two double crochets into this corner space here. One and two. And then to create a new corner, you're gonna work a chain two. And then three double crochets also into this corner chain two space. One, two, and three. Now we're gonna do a chain one and this is forming our side. And then we're already back over here to our next corner space. So you're gonna work three double crochets. One, two, three. And we need to create a new corner. So chain two for your corners. And then three more double crochets into this corner space. The corner space from the previous row, of course. So one, two, and three, so we formed a new little corner. So we have two corners. So to form our side, we're gonna do a little chain one. Jump back over to the next corner and we'll work our three double crochets. Chain two for our corner and three double crochets all into that chain two corner space. So one, two, and three. So you have your corner here. Then create a side with the chain one. Then in this final little corner, again, same thing. Three double crochets, two, and three, chain two, and three double crochets. So this forms that final corner. One, two, and three. And then once you've got that done, you're gonna to wanna to make sure and do a little chain one so that you form the side over here. And you're just gonna work a slip stitch into that one, two, three, third chain that you started that round with. 
So for this round, you're going to start with a chain three, and then another one, chain four. So that counts as a double crochet and then a chain one. So then you're going to work your corners. So jump over here to your corner, and you just work three double crochets. One, two, and three. Work your corner by working a chain two, and then three more double crochets, creating another little cluster there in that corner space. So lots of repetition in this pattern. So there's your little corner. Now to form your side, you're gonna have a chain one, and we actually have a little space here on this side. So you're gonna work your little three double crochet cluster into that chain one space. And then we're still on the side, so chain one. Now we're over to a corner. So work your corner in that chain two space, which is three double crochets, chain two for your corner, and three more double crochets all into that corner space. One, two, and three. And you can always stop and check your work. Make sure you've got chain twos in the corners and chain ones on the side. So chain one, work your three double crochet cluster into this chain one space. One, two, and three. And then chain one, since we're still on the side. Now we're going to work our corner, so three double crochets, two and three, chain two for your corner, and three more double crochets into that same corner space. Again, go ahead and give it a little check, make sure everything's looking good, your corners are popping. Then chain one, work three double crochets into this next side chain one space. One, two, and three. Chain one, since we're still on the side. Now we're gonna work our corner. Same thing as we've been doing. Three double crochets. One, two, and three. Chain two for the corner, and three more double crochets. One, two, and three. So as we're rounding this final corner, you wanna finish with a chain one, and you're gonna work two double crochets into this chain one space on the side, one and two, and then finish with a slip stitch <clears throat> into the top of one, two, three, this little third chain here. So that looks like three little double crochets, even though that was a chain three. So the subsequent rounds are really similar to those, so you should be good to go. Just make sure that you've got chain one spaces on your sides, and then chain two spaces in your corners, and then the rest are little three double crochet clusters. So that's how you work the first three rows. If you wanna continue on with the pattern and make five rows like we did for this pattern, you can definitely do that. And technically, you can just repeat those final two rows as many times as you like to make your granny square the size you want. So once you have your granny squares complete, we're gonna learn how to work a single crochet border all around the edge. And this is just gonna make it easier to join them later. Let's go ahead and work our border. I'm gonna actually go ahead and cut this yarn. And you can just finish that off and we'll get started on our border. So go ahead and pick a corner, any corner, and pull up your new color. And one secure way to attach that is once you've pulled it through, go ahead and grab both your tail and your working yarn, pull them both through that loop, and then pull your tail all the way through and cinch it up, and that helps create a little bit more of a secure little, you know, attachment. So what you're gonna do to start is work a single crochet into this corner space. And then a single crochet into each of the next three double crochets. Two, three. Work a single crochet into that chain space. Work one into each of the next three double crochets. Work a single crochet into the chain space and then a single crochet into each of those next three double crochets. And then when you get to the next corner, and yours will be a little bit bigger if you've worked the subsequent rows of this granny square, you're gonna go ahead and work three single crochets into that corner space. One, two, and three. And you're just gonna continue repeating this all the way around. So you're basically working a single crochet into each stitch and each chain space along the side and then when you get to the corners, make sure that you work three single crochets into each corner. 
Now I'm coming up upon a little tail here. If you would like, and you can do this at the beginning of your round two, you can actually just work right over your tails. So just hold them along with your work and just work right over them. It's just a little bit fewer ends to weave in when you're finished. So when you get to the end, you only had one single crochet originally here in this first corner. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and work two more single crochets and then just join with a slip stitch into that very first single crochet. So at this point, you should have a beautiful little granny square. You may have five rows, I've got three on mine. And then you'll have a gorgeous little single crochet border going all the way around. This new method of how to work a granny square is fabulous because the beginning and ends of the rounds are actually on the side of your square, not at the corners. And since the corners often get pulled and tugged, this makes your granny square nice and sturdy. So there you have it, my friend. That is how easy it is to work a granny square. So stay tuned for part two because I'm about to blow your mind with an amazing stretchy reversible join. So I will see you then. Mm -hmm.